get set up, I'll go ahead and introduce myself. I'm Cameron Anderson, I'm Department Head, Professor in Psychological Sciences. I'm Jamie Borchardt, Assistant Department Head and Assistant Professor in Psychological Sciences. So um, we are going to talk to you a little bit today about um, a plan we hatched to use um, this tool in a different way. Our department has this year for the first time done um, group advising, so we had two faculty members who did send out an appointment campaign and those sorts of things. But uh, Dr. Borchardt and I want to do something slightly different. We thought of retention in a broader sense in terms of communicating with our majors and talking to them about things that they could get involved with the major and have a more, I, I have a deeper connection with what we're doing in all aspects. So not just advising and, and appointment campaigns. So our plan was pretty simple. Um, we wanted to communicate directly with our majors because we felt like, oh my gosh, now we can. We don't have to go in and pull lists and do six different emails through Outlook because the list is so big. Because so we have, this spring, the, the size of our major was, I think it's 746 or 42. So we have a large major. So we wanted to build rapport, reinforce and suggest some good habits that we're always kind of harping on students about, and then also expose them to study abroad, service learning and research opportunities, all the high impact practices that we're doing with the department that, that keep them here, that get them engaged on a different level. All right, so in terms of building rapport, um, in the fall we took a, a slightly different approach than we did in the um, spring. In the fall we did a series of um, messages out to majors that we put on our calendars to remind ourselves to go in and, and initiate those and we actually rewrote them out. Um, they were nice and wordy because that's how I write emails. <laughs> and so the freshmen got a different set of emails because they're, they're brand new on campus and they need to hear different things like welcome and you know don't forget this and that and, and those sorts of things. And then the all other classifications, they got different sets of messages. I didn't need to treat them like they were brand new. And the seniors, of course, heard other things like thinking about graduation. Are you sure you've you know met with your advisor to make sure you're you're ready to graduate? Those sorts of things. So we did reminders about academic advising when it was time to pre-register when their classification was supposed to register, you'd send that message out, get an immediate reply, when do I register? It's like, it was in the email, but I'll restate that for you, you know. Um, the pre-registration period, they kept getting, okay, now it's your turn, this is your time, um, those sorts of reminders. And then re-recruitment, after the pre-registration period was over, looking back to see who should have registered and who did not, and then reaching out to them to say, by the way, pre-registration happened, you need to go in and make sure you're registering for next semester, you need to make sure you're getting advised and things of that nature. So it was um, communicating with them and telling them we're here to support you and help you. So suggesting good habits, they got some messages about checking their progress midterm. If you look at your progress, be honest with yourself and think, do I need to change what I'm doing to have a better outcome? Um, so we had things like that, make a plan to be successful. And this semester, we, tr we, we tried something as a department. We've been offering more eight-week classes. And we have noticed that some of our students tend not to fill out course evaluations. So around week seven, when we were ending the first eight weeks, we sent out a separate communication to our majors saying, hey, we've done some eight-week classes. And we need some feedback on that. And the course evaluation is a perfect place to do that. And by the way, we also need feedback on what you what you see this, you know, the positive parts of your classes and what are the negative parts. Don't just tell me you love or hate an instructor. I need to know what's good and what's bad because we need your feedback. So we did that to encourage course evaluation completion. And it also lets them know that someone is actually looking at their course evaluations because sometimes students think they're not worth anything, no one cares. Um, and we do want to hear from them how did the eight-week format work? Because if it's not working well, they might be doing well, but they don't like it, we need to stop delivering eight-week classes. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Borchardt. Okay, so one thing that I want to mention is that Kim is great. She is super organized, and so what she did is put all of our reminders for the entire semester at the very beginning of our semester so that that way she would remember like okay these are the things that I need to send out and I think that that's a really great thing because we would get these reminders on our calendar hey it's time to send out this particular message and so she's really awesome about this 
she's also has like spearheaded all of this, so it's like, definitely like, something that I just want to make. So. <laughs> um, but some of the things I wanted to talk to you all about is how we send out some of these messages. So I really love the approach of this like ready, set, go competitiveness. And we send out messages to students specifically like for study abroad opportunities, for example. We may send out a message that says, hey, you, we only have 12 spots available in this study abroad opportunity, and you need to get on that really quickly. We do things like that with registration as well, just to kind of inspire some type of friendly competitiveness to get that whatever they needed to do taken care of quickly. So with our study abroad opportunities, something that we had read about on um, SSC uh, marketing information was that we needed to put catchy titles, something short and sweet that people would want to open up. So how many of y'all have an email that comes through on a regular basis that you're like, delete immediately, you don't even read it? They're all in the day. Why we went with SNC? Because when we see those messages, so today, for example, I had a message come in that was from a book buyer. <laughs> and I was like, delete, because you know exactly what that's going to say. So we, what we did is we talked about some things that would be more catchy. So for example, with our study abroad opportunities, going to Galapagos, we said, animal lovers wanted. <laughs> And so people would click on those things. Another one was adventure seekers needed. And then uh, we also did a campaign for, not campaign, but a message for uh, the Ireland Study Abroad Program. And we said, um, how would you like to spend St. Patrick's Day in Ireland? And so that's just a catchy title that people click on. And then we tried to keep the wording limited. So that way that people would not see like a giant sea of information and then so hard for me to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and as uh, Dr. Ryan Erickson had mentioned, uh, we had sent out some information to our students in the very beginning of the fall semester, kind of just discussing like our overall plans. In the spring semester, we talked about more specific opportunities for students. So as you can see, Student Research Participation in SWAPA, which is our Southwestern Psychological Association, we take students to present at that conference. And so we wanted just to let them know about that specific conference. And at the end, we would talk about um, our Facebook posting so that they could click on that link to, to see some of the pictures of the students presenting. Um, special programs such as the Waco VA internship. So we wanted students to be able to, um, to know about some of the opportunities that they might have at specific campus locations. Special topics courses. We just sent out several special topics courses information and um, emails to students in particular majors. So that way they would know that these special topics courses existed. So we targeted specific majors. So uh, for example, when we have we have an eyewitness testimony class that's new this year, and we sent it out to the criminal justice majors, to some of the communications majors, and to our psychology majors. So, so sometimes we would target specific majors, and that worked out really nicely for us to get the word out there that we had these special topics courses available. And then the last one is our speaker event. We had a speaker event that some of you may have went to that was a Holocaust survivor came to speak to our campus. And we sent out messages to our students letting them know about that opportunity so that they would know that we're doing other things in the department that are related to psychology that would kind of give them more of a real world experience. And so these are some of the things that we did to provide other opportunities for students, other than just talking to them just specifically about things that they need to do associated with registration and, and whatnot. So we wanted them to be aware that we have all of these things. If you're a psychology major, you get so many great opportunities. <laughs> yeah. So we thought of retention broader, because you always hear people say, get involved with your major. And I don't know that students really know what that means. So we told them all the different ways. We had, we had messages about we had one about psychology club back in the fall. So now they know what's going on in the major um, and how to get involved and to do different kinds of experiences, all the things that all the research say that when students start to do these things, they tend to retain longer. So we took care of the transactional stuff and we took care of the fun as well. So that's, that's it. What questions do you guys have for us? <laughs> so do you... 
do you believe that, okay, because you're sending out those targeted messages to students that are in, you know, who are in the psychology department. I, I know you have around like 750. Yes. So do you think that the students go closer to your department or do you foresee any like small incremental changes? So we collected that? zero data. Okay. All right. So all we were seeking to do was just to try to communicate more. But um, so I'll say anecdotally, um, we had more students than ever go to Swampa. Mm -hmm. um, so we had, she had a huge turnout for the speaker event. I think there were 400 people there. Um, and there were lots of students there. We've already filled a year from now study abroad. Um, so there are things that are indirectly happening that I don't, that we don't know that are actually a direct result of this. But uh, we seem to have a lot of participation and a raising of awareness of things that the department's doing among students. So that's how So, since I was a Carleton graduate from the Waco campus yeah. as a psychology major, I was just curious how well are handling the communication at the home campus and then the Waco, and if it's being coordinated between the oh, I'm so glad you asked that because that was something that um, I talked to some of the outreach advisors about. Are you using this tool yet? So, they haven't been really using it to do location specific um, communications to just the Waco students. So we've included all of the psychology majors in our communications. And so the one that mentioned um, the Waco VA internship was part of a larger message about get involved. And that went out in the early fall to everybody. Um, but it had all sorts of different things. And so it said these are some examples. And so the point was to demonstrate there's something available everywhere. But you certainly could, and there would be a reason why we might want to do something like that. because. The, and, I'll, and I'll use the Waco VA internship. Yes, that does apply to the Waco students, but really any student that wanted to do that could do it. Um, and so it's kind of nice to know because it's so specific and such a unique opportunity. Um, but we could certainly, since this was our first year doing, we could start, we, we stratified it by classification in the fall. We did it so much in the spring. We could certainly do it by, by location when, when needed. And that's something that I really initially really liked about this tool was how, how you can break you can really slice and dice your student population um, for different, different populations. So I have something to add to that. So we had a, a class that we needed more students to be in in order for that class to make. And so I sent out a message to just specifically the Fort Worth campus students and said, hey, we have openings in this particular class. Sign up for this class is a great opportunity. <laughs> and so it was it was beneficial for me to just target that campus because that didn't apply to the students who were in Stephenville and Waco because it was a face-to-face -face Fort Worth class. Related to that, we do have a capstone course in the major that is about a year old in terms of it's being offered. And there's been some confusion about the students, do I, do I really have to take it? Can't you set something else? And it's like, no, you really have to take it. <laughs> and so we have had, we were gonna offer it this summer. And um, we were concerned, will we have enough to make summer enrollment? So there was a message sent out to students, you're ready for capstone. It's offered this summer. And so that's a progression issue as well for students because you're keeping that momentum in terms of the enrollment um, going. So that was, it, it, we have no trouble with that class. And all of a sudden it was at 22 and we were like, we're saying it's good. <laughs> so, okay. So, okay. All right. Thank you guys so much. Thank you.